Hello friends, so I'm back with module 2 of collapse. In this, we shall see pattern of collapse affecting a particular lobe. So I'll be showing a case and by the end of the case, you will be able to identify a particular type of collapse. So let's begin. So you have a radiograph. Now let's try reading it. What is the abnormality that you see? So you can pause for a moment and look at it and come to a conclusion. If you have found the abnormality, it's good. For those who have not found the abnormality, don't worry. We shall discuss them how to reach it. So as you can see, comparing both lung parenchyma, you can see the left lung appears fairly normal. In the right side, you can see an opacity. So there is a pathology. Pathology in the form of opacity. Now we shall see what are the conditions that produces opacity. It can be consolidation. It can be collapse, it can be mass or nodule. Let's take them one by one. First about consolidation. So does this picture really fit into consolidation? Well, not so. There are two reasons mainly. The characteristic feature of consolidation is air bronchogram. So for those who are not familiar, don't worry, we shall discuss them in subsequent lectures. And there is one more reason why I say this is not consolidation. Because of characteristic evidence of volume loss. So friends, in previous lecture, we have seen the marker of collapse is volume loss. Why do I say that? Because the fissure is elevated. Don't worry, we shall reach that in a moment. So by this way, we have almost ruled out consolidation. Now going to the second modality. Let's take mass first. By definition, mass means opacity more than 3 cm. So does this really fit into a mass? Well, it's difficult to say that. Because, yes, there is an opacity and maybe it's more than 3 cm. But because of this typical shape or morphology, it is unlikely to stamp it just as a mass because it fits into something better. At this juncture, we shall see something about collapse. That is, whether this actually fits into collapse. So, let's see whether it fits into collapse. Now let's revise the signs, the direct and the indirect signs. What does this white think? It refers to or it denotes something known as loss of aeration. So this is one of the direct signs of collapse. So that is present. Now let's see about this sharp margin which delineates this opacity. It is nothing but the minor fissure. So this satisfies another direct sign of collapse which is the displacement of the fissure. So let's take a quick look. So at the level of fourth rib we expect the normal position of horizontal fissure. So what happens in case of upper lobe collapse? As you can see in the figure this fissure from this pos position shifts up and up. So the lateral end will move up and it will go superiorly and medially so that it will delineate or bring a sharp border to the collapsed non-aerated lung parenchyma. So we have seen another sign of collapse. Now let's see about the third direct sign of collapse. It's about the crowding of bronchiovascular markings. So can you make it out? It's really difficult to make it out in a chest x-ray. You can appreciate it better in CT scan. With this example, I like to bring to you notice that all the signs of collapse may not be evident. So, so in radiology, uh, one way of learning is go by the algorithm so that you may not miss. So this is really applicable to the initial learning phase where when you see a structure, you try to uh, put in together whatever you know. For example, we've seen two signs of collapse here and thus arriving at the diagnosis of right upper lobe collapse. But sometimes that's not enough. 
Once you've seen this, you may see several cases like this and then it becomes pattern recognition. So next time you see a case like this, you should be immediately be able to diagnose this as right upper lobe collapse. So you have a homogeneous opacity, opacity with characteristic volume loss and here the sign of volume loss would be the displacement of fissure marginated by a sharp border of fissure in the upper zone like this. This is until otherwise proved or this is by dictum a right upper lobe collapse. Now let's just see how the collapse looks on lateral chest radiograph. So you have a pictorial representation of lateral chest radiograph. You have the heart here and this line which I'm going to draw is the major fissure, part of the major fissure and this one is the minor fissure. So here you can see this is the expected position of the major fissure but it has gone anteriorly and this is somewhat the position of the minor fissure and it has gone again upwards. So this region represents the right upper lobe collapse. So if you look here, you have the major fissure, minor fissure cannot be made out. Now let's see how collapse looks on lateral chest radiograph. So given before your figure, what is striking? There is some opacity here. Now you need to characterize it. So use all the signs. What do you see? You have a sharp border here. Yes, you have something over here. So this is a region of minor fissure and this is the region of major fissure and both has been displaced and it is outlining an opacity so this is a case of upper lobe collapse keep this picture in mind and once you get it you should be confidently be able to diagnose it as right upper lobe collapse